Okay, here we go. All right, so I've also made it slightly bigger. So I'm just going to go over again what I just uh, talked about. So on the Thursday, on the lecture 18, we looked at this example of computing the Fourier series of x squared on 0 to 2 pi. So you draw 0 to 2 pi. And actually, when we say this Fourier series, we mean the 2 pi PR extension of the function. Okay, so it's the 0 to 2 pi function, and then you take that function, and then you simply copy and paste that, and you would have something like this. This is now minus pi, this is minus 2 pi. And what you're expecting is that if you were to plot the Fourier series once you've computed it, then it would lie on top of this extension. Okay, that's the basic idea. And then yesterday we looked at different ways of extending this function, not just the 2 pi periodic extension, but we talked about the even and odd extension. So we're going to do that later after this example, after we finish this example. The other thing that we talked about on the lecture 18 was, okay, we, we wrote down the Fourier series and then we began to compute it. We got to the very end of the a n coefficients. So here is the, is the standard thing you'd write. f x is like a naught over 2 plus the sum from 1 to infinity of a n cosine of n x plus b n times sine of n x, like so. OK? And then you go away and you calculate the a n coefficients, and we'll just repeat that. It's 1 over l, or l here is equal to pi, so 1 over pi. The integral from minus pi to pi of x squared cosine of nx. Now if you're ready to use yesterday's material, then you could have instead written 1 over l minus l to l cosine n pi x over l, and then of course you'd set l equal to pi in this case. Okay? And we found this value, I'll write it down. We found that this was equal to 4 over n squared if n is not equal to 0. And you always have to do these restrictions whenever you possibly divide by 0. So you have to go and then recompute the a0 case. Okay, so um, someone has asked a really good question about is there any reason why you would choose the odd extension of a function rather than an even extension of the function? Um, there's no reason at the moment. These are just kind of tools that I've, I've said. There's a way for you to extend a function in an odd way and an even way. So you can think of it that way, that these are just tools. Now, why would you want to do an odd extension versus an even extension? That's an excellent question, and it has to do with the convergence of the series. Yes. So the microphone might not be working as well, but um, I'll try to speak more slowly. I can't quite adjust it at the moment, but I'll make sure I speak more clearly and more slowly. So I'll try to explain um, if I can remember in a moment uh, why you would do an even or an odd extension. And it has to do with the fact that some extensions will converge faster than others. And so numerically, it may be better for you to use one or the other. For the moment, we're not talking about even and odd extension. This is just a regular 2 pi extension. We've computed the a n case. Let's compute the a0 case. So a0 is 1 over pi, and then the integral from minus pi to pi of x squared dx, because you simply set cosine here of 0 is 1, and then this is just 1 over pi, 1 third times pi cubed. Okay, minus 0. Okay, very good. So you've computed a0, and then you, ha you have to compute bn. Okay? So, um, this is a bit of a long calculation. I want to erase some of this um, because I'm going to be using the BN calculation again when I compute the odd extension. So, I want to make sure we get a fresh forward. Okay, 
So we're going to compute the bn. This time we're going to do it from scratch so you understand how it works. So you write bn is equal to 1 over pi, the integral from minus uh, from 0 to 2 pi of x squared sine of nx dx. Okay? It's 0 to 2 pi for the original function defined from 0 to 2 pi. Okay? And now we have to do integration by parts here. So by the end of this course, you'll hopefully be quite quick with your integration by parts. But here you're going to let u be equal to x squared. And you let your dv be equal to sine of nx dx. And then you have to integrate this function. And it's u times v minus v du. Right, for the integration by parts. If you're fast, you don't have to write this down. If you're afraid of making a mistake, then write it down. Yeah, so <laughs> I was worried. I was worried. So, someone had asked basically, did you write down minus pi to pi? I think in the, in the piece that I erased. And when I wrote this down, in the back of my mind, I thought, did I write minus pi to pi? So I think I did accidentally write minus pi to pi. So in the piece here that I wrote for an, you want to make sure you integrate from 0 to 2 pi rather than from minus pi to pi. The original function for this question was defined from 0 to 2 pi. So remember, if it's a 0 to 2 L interval, you just integrate over that range. All right, so this is the, the correct way you should be doing it from 0 to 2 pi here. OK. Good. I'm, it's really good that I'm able to catch a lot of, um, or you're able to catch a lot of these issues, and I'm able to read them on time. Okay. So you're going to do an integration by parts. Okay. You're going to write down the x squared. Then you have to integrate the sine of nx. So that's going to give you a negative cosine of nx over n, evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. Okay. And then you have to subtract u dv, and that equates to adding, because there's a negative sign here, of 1 over n, the integral from 0 to 2 pi. And then I have to differentiate, I have a 2x, and then I, I have to write down the cosine of nx here. OK, there's already an n here, so I don't need this n here. I think that's right. Just make sure here. I think that's right. Okay, and then um, you're going to substitute these limits into this u times v, and then you have to integrate this person again. All right, so this is 1 over pi. And then substitute that in. This is minus 2 pi squared. You have to be very careful with your brackets whenever you do these problems. You're going to have a cosine of 2n pi, right? So this is going to be over n. And then this is a cosine of 2n pi. But remember that cosine of 2n pi is just equal to 1. Okay? And then you have to subtract the zero limit, but on the zero limit, it's multiplied by an x squared here, so it's just simply zero. Okay? And then you have to do the same thing here. You integrate this by parts, right? And then um, away you go. So you're going to have 2 over n. If you want to be careful, you can use your brackets again, so you have an innermost bracket for the integration by parts. You're going to write down the x. Integrate the cosine, which becomes a sine of nx over n, evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. And then you have to subtract the derivative of the x, and then you rewrite the sine component. So you subtract the 1 over n, 0 to 2 pi. It's a 1 for the derivative of the x here. And then you rewrite the sign. I need one bracket and then another bracket for the outermost brace. Okay. Again, be very, very careful. 
someone has asked a really good question about what, what would happen if you integrate from minus pi to pi instead of zero to two pi. It should work out to be the same answer. I'll mention it um, after I finish this, okay? It, it will work out to be the same answer as long as you use this picture. Okay, so uh, make sure when you do the integration by parts, you're very careful with an additional brackets just to make sure the signs work out. Hopefully the signs will work out here. When you get to this stage, okay, the sine of nx function, when you integrate this function, you should have cosine of nx, uh, which is non-zero, so, you know, which will turn out to be zero, but we'll, we'll go through it. This is an integral of a periodic function, which is periodic over zero to two pi, and it will turn out to be zero. We're going to simplify this first term, so this is a one over pi minus 2 pi squared over n. Now when I put 2 pi and 0 into the sine function, it always disappears. Okay, So any multiple of pi in a sine will disappear. So this will go away. And I'm simply left with this component here. So we'll do that um, slowly. So minus 2 over n squared and then it's an integral from 0 to 2 pi of a sine of nx dx. Okay. The problem isn't difficult, you just have to be very, very careful with all the integration. I have to be careful myself and just make sure I don't make a mistake. Okay, so now you just have to integrate this sine of nx function. Um, let's do that over here. So you have a minus you have a 1 over pi and then a minus 2 pi squared. Sorry, it's a minus 2 pi squared, like this, over n. And then I have to subtract, I have to integrate the sine function here so I get a cosine function, right? So this becomes a plus 2 over n cubed cosine of nx, 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so let's just make sure. So if I differentiate 2 over n cubed times cosine of nx, I'll have a minus 2 over n cubed times sine of nx uh, times an n here. And that should get me exactly this antiderivative. Okay, so um, now when you substitute this, these two limits into this cosine function, you'll just have cosine of 2n pi minus 1. Okay, but cosine of 2n pi is just always 1. Any multiple of 2 pi insert to the cosine is just 1, so this will disappear. Okay, and then you're finally left with essentially that component there. So this is going to be a minus. Uh, 4 times, you have a pi squared on the top divided by a pi, leaving you with minus 4 times pi over n, like so. And there's your bn's. And this works as long as n is not equal to 0, which is perfectly fine. This is just n greater than or equal to 1. Here we are. Okay, so the final answer you see is actually not so bad, um, but to get there, you can, obviously you have a few extra calculations to do. Okay. So um, I want to leave this up for now. I want to make sure I write down the an so you have them as well. So uh, we're going to write down here. And then I'll show you a picture. We're going to make sure that this is right um, just by a picture. So this is a naught is 1 over pi. And this is a 1 third. And this is a 2 pi cubed. And then you have an a n is 4 over n squared. And here n has to be greater than or equal to uh, 1. Okay, so now let's plot this function. The Fourier series, we're going to reconstruct the Fourier series using these numbers and going to see what it actually looks like. Does it actually match up with what we expect? Okay, so.
Okay, can you all see the MATLAB screen? Okay, very good. So, um, what, what we're going to do is, this is very similar to the code that we used yesterday. What we're going to do now is plot uh, the Fourier series between a range from minus pi to 3 pi that you see here. This is constructing a vector from minus pi to 3 pi with 5,000 elements. You're going to use Fourier series with 1, 5, 10, and then 50 terms in the series. And then this is exactly what we wrote down before. The Fourier series will start off at some a naught. If, if, if this confuses you, I'm going to write here a naught is equal to this here. And this is now a naught over 2, you see? Okay. And then you're going to add a n times the cosine components plus bn times the sine components, and these are just the ans and the bns that I wrote down just a moment ago on the board. Okay, And then the title here is wrong. This is the Fourier series for x squared on 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so let's plot that and see what it looks like. We're going to run it. Okay, And here we are. Okay, so let's, what do we see? So firstly, the origin, I'm going to show you the origin. The origin is where my mouse is at zero, zero. The x-axis, remember the original domain that you were interested in ran from zero to two pi. So that's zero to 6.2-ish, okay, over here. So you were trying to approximate the x-squared function. The function is shown in black. So the black curve is the original parabola, okay? And shown on this graph are the different Fourier series approximations depending on whether you're using one term and five terms and ten terms and fifty terms, etc. So the worst approximation is just the blue, okay? But then you see it gets better and better from red to yellow then to purple, okay? So just focus your eye on that band from zero to two pi and you see it looks indeed quite good, right? As you get, as you, as you increase the number of terms, and we can try in a moment, we're going to put say 100 or 500 terms and see what it looks like. As you increase the number of terms, it looks very good. You know by the Fourier convergence theorem that at any point where the function is continuous, it's going to converge. So at any interior point, for example, near where my mouse is, okay, it's going to converge to the function itself as you increase the number of points, uh, the number of terms in the series. However, you also know by the Fourier convergence theorem that it's going to converge at the points of discontinuity, the Fourier series will converge to the midpoint. Okay, so half the left plus the right. Now, look at the, point, the value of the function at 2 pi. At 2 pi, the left side will converge towards 2 pi squared, right? Because it's an x squared. So the height here, where my mouse is, is at 2 pi, all in brackets, squared. But the right side of the function is the periodic extension of the function. And so it's actually the right side here at 2 pi is actually the value of the function at x equal to 0, where the mouse is now. In other words, the function should converge to, the Fourier series should converge to 2 pi squared plus 0 divided by 2, okay? And that's what you're beginning to see here. So if I, we zoom in to the point of discontinuity, you should notice that as the number of terms in the Fourier series increases, it eventually approaches that point that I've pointed out. We can find its value. Let's try to find the value of the function here. So what is it? It's one half times two times pi squared plus zero. Yeah? So it should be around 19.7392. 
And then on top of this graph, let's just try, let's just try to plot it. I'm going to plot between minus pi to pi. Uh, let's plot between minus pi to 3 times pi. And then I'm just going to plot a horizontal line with that height, 19.74 times 1, 1. And then let's plot a, let's plot a blue line like that. And there we are, okay? So what you should notice is that at that value, at 2 pi, eventually all these curve, curves will approach this line, basically the height of that line. That's what the Fourier convergence theorem tells you. Okay? All right, so that's basically all there is to know about this particular example. Let's try it as a test. Let's try putting in more. So let's try n vowels. We're going to say use uh, 500. 500 terms of the series. Let's run that. Let's see what it looks like. Ah, here we are. And now you see it looks even better. So to this level of accuracy, to the graphical accuracy that we have here, at least on the interior of the function, right, you're, you're seeing it like almost directly on the x squared graph, which is the black line, okay? But again, you see the Gibbs phenomenon. That's a good question. I, um, yeah, so someone has asked basically, why is it that for the square wave, all the Fourier series seem to go through the midpoint, whereas for this function, all the Fourier series don't go through the midpoint right away, but they eventually converge to the midpoint. My impression is that it is just by the symmetry of the function. So for the previous example of the square wave, for the function that was one and then minus one, it was just particularly simple. And so the Fourier series just happen out of chance to go exactly through the midpoint at all n. Okay, so you see that now the function looks very good, except the Fourier series looks very good, but you still have this Gibbs phenomenon business, right? You always still have those oscillations near the points of discontinuity, okay? And again, you could, if you wanted to, if you're, if you're really interested in the maths, go away and try to calculate the height of this, uh, of this overshoot, of this extra peak, right? And that's um, an interesting calculation to do. Okay, so I'm trying to remember all the interesting questions that people have asked. So before we go on to the next bit, so we're going to do an odd extension of this function. Um, I'm going to go back to the camera here, okay? And we're going to find out that for the odd extension, you don't actually have to change very much in terms of these calculations. Now, one question that someone had asked was, Suppose I made the mistake and I integrated, instead of integrating from 0 to 2 pi, as I should have done for the original function, I integrated from minus pi to pi. Well, what happens there? And the answer is that you're okay. So you, if you write down, I'm going to have to write in small here, I'm going to write down bn is 1 over pi and then the integral from minus pi to pi of f of x dx, uh, sine of x of nx dx. Suppose that you went and made that mistake. Instead of going from 0 to pi, you went from minus pi to pi. Then that's perfectly fine. You just have to remember that this function that you put in here is the periodic extension of the function. So you need to first integrate x squared from 0 to pi, but then on the reverse piece, on the minus pi to 0 piece, you have to integrate this function. So you have to get this function here over that other piece. You would split this integral into two pieces, one from minus pi to zero where you're integrating that function, and then you're, then you're integrating the x squared function from zero to pi. It would work out to be exactly the same answer, but you'd have to find that function first of all, which is not a hard function. This is just the x squared function with the appropriate shift to, to move it backwards, you see? Okay, and then you have to split this into two pieces and then integrate each piece. So you get the same answer, but the key is that you can't integrate the original x squared function. So it would be wrong for you to integrate, for example, the piece that goes up. 
right, if you want to recover the same answer. You have to integrate the periodic extension of the function, not the original function itself. Okay, so that answers that part of the question. Okay, now let's look at the odd extension, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to um, write, it, write the question at the top of this board here, but I actually want to use some of this calculation, so we're not going to erase most of the calculation. Okay, so now as a twist, let's calculate the 2 pi odd extension. of x squared um, from 0 to pi. Okay, so the terminology is that I've given you, I'm going to erase this graph here, and it's going to become very clear, I'm going to erase the graph. I've given you the x squared function, I'm just going to make this slightly bigger. I've given you the x squared function from 0 to pi, and I've asked you to construct for me the odd extension of the function. Okay? And so, how do you construct the odd extension of the function? Well, you just take that function and then you form its odd part on the left. So, on the left here, you're going to have that. This was the picture that we drew yesterday, remember? So it's going to be x squared on the top here, and it's going to be minus x squared on the bottom, and that's the odd extension of the function. Once you've done that, once you have an odd extension from minus pi to pi, then you just copy and paste that function over. Okay? So you, you then have this piece here, and then a piece that goes up like that, and then you, again, you take this piece, and then sh you shift it back by uh, 2 pi. Okay, and I won't draw that just because it's going to get messy for the board. Okay, so now that you've done that odd extension, great. What's going to happen now to the Fourier series calculation? Right. Well, step one is you realize that actually I don't need the cosine components because I have an odd function. So I just have a sine series. Okay. A step two is for you to realize that because this is a sine series integrated from minus pi to pi, I don't have to integrate from minus pi to pi. I can just integrate from 0 to pi and then double up by a factor of 2. And if you don't remember that, then just go to yesterday's video and we wrote down the formula for that. So what I'm saying here, I'm going to raise that integration for parts. What I'm saying is that you would go here and instead you would write down, instead of an x squared here, So you know from yesterday that the Fourier series, f of x, will basically just be the odd extension of the function. So this is just the bn sine of nx components from 1 to infinity. Okay, And to be specific, it's sometimes better for you just to write fo here for the odd extension. That, that's what we mean by the fo function. Okay, so it's the function, which is x squared on the right, and then minus x squared on the left. Okay, so now you're going to write fo here, and you have sine of nx, and remember the reasoning from yesterday, this is minus pi to pi. The reasoning from yesterday was that this is odd, fo of x is odd by design, sine of nx is an odd function by design, well, by, by the properties of the sine function. And odd times odd is even, so this is equivalent to just integrating the doubled up version, 2 over pi, the integral from 0 to uh, pi of x squared sine of nx. And I won't write the dx here just because I don't have space. Okay? So you just have to double up 2 over pi, integrate from 0 to pi of the x squared function. So everything is the same. I'm going to erase now the limits. The way I'm doing this, I'm going to end up erasing a lot of this stuff. So if you're writing notes from home, it's a little bit more difficult. But 
So the lesson is that you don't have to integrate over the entire interval, you just integrate from 0 to pi, right? And you're going to integrate the x squared function, and you just have to double up on the left here. So you have 2 over pi x squared. So it's virtually identical to what we had before. Before we had a 1 over pi and then 0 to 2 pi. That's why I kept the calculation. All we have to go do is now go and replace the 2 pi, the former 2 pi limit, with now pi. Okay? So, well, what's going to happen? Let's go line by line. So this is a 2 instead of a 1. This is now a pi instead of a 2 pi. And this is going to be a pi instead of a 2 pi. So this line is now fine. Okay? So now, in, when we substitute the upper limit into the x squared functions, we don't have a 2 pi anymore, we just have a pi. And instead of a cosine of 2 n pi, we just have a cosine of n times pi. So this will no longer always be equal to 1. Remember that here, whenever you see cosine of n pi in your head, you should always be thinking just minus 1 to the n. So this will be minus 1 to the n. That's what cosine of n pi reduces to. Okay? Okay, good. So now what about this piece? Well, for this piece, this was the integral of the cosine nx by integration by parts. We now have a sine evaluated from 0 to pi instead of 0 to 2 pi. But this conclusion is still true. If I integrate, if I evaluate the sine at any multiple of pi, I have 0, and then at 0, it's simply 0. Then this is going to be from 0 to pi again. Okay, then let's keep on going. So now this is minus pi squared times minus 1 to the n. Now, let's clean this up a little bit with the minus 2 over n squared. Minus 2 over n squared here. And then this is just rewriting this component here. So this is now just 0 to pi of sine of nx. Okay? Good, we're almost to the end. This is now minus pi squared times minus 1 to the n. Okay. And then you have to integrate the sine function, which is this cosine function, but now this is no longer zero. I'll move this out of the way. This is no longer zero. We said it was zero before because we had cosine of 2n pi, which is just 1, minus 1. So 1 minus 1 is zero. Here, it's no longer going to be zero because this is going to be from zero to pi instead. Okay, let's erase this. This is no longer relevant. We don't need the a n anymore, and we're going to erase this as well. And so you, you, you simply have to put in those last limits here. So let's do that. So you have a minus, you have a 1 over pi times a minus pi squared minus 1 to the n over n plus 2 over n cubed and then in brackets, cosine of n pi is just minus 1 to the n. And that's just minus cosine of 0, which is just 1. Okay? And that's it. We're done. Okay, so then, I mean, this is... There's not much you can do with this, right? There's not much you can simplify with this. There's, there is going to be some kind of even an odd simplification here, sometimes it's zero, sometimes it's not, but overall the um, overall these bn numbers are going to be that without much additional simplification. So now the next step, ah, is it not 2 over pi? You're absolutely right. We corrected the 2 over pi here on the top line, and I forgot to bring that correction throughout Thank you very much. Okay. 
You're all super sharp for 9 a.m. Okay, so let's try to plot that. So I'm, I'll flash my um, display again. We have a slightly different code for that. Okay, but the principle of the code is exactly the same. Here, I've had to create an additional function just for the b because it's such a mess. But this is just the expression we wrote down before. I did get the 2 over pi factor right in this um, implementation. So you see 2 over pi and then the first component plus this component of minus 1 to the n minus 1. Okay, but then everything else is the same. The only difference is make sure that you start off your series at 0 and then at every additional term in the series you just add b of n times sine of nx. This is what's written here. And so again, we're going to try it with one term, five terms, ten terms, uh, and so forth and so on. Okay? Okay, so let's correct this as well. So this is the Fourier series for the odd extension of x squared. Okay, and here we are. So let's plot that. Okay, and there we are. So, uh, again, let me just localize, help localize you. The origin is here where my mouse is. Okay, this is zero, zero. And on the right of the function, you have x squared. So this black line is x squared. On the left of the function, on the left of the origin, what you're expecting or what you're wanting is the odd extension of the black line. So the odd extension of the black line is just minus x squared on the left here, and that's exactly what the Fourier series seems to be converging to, right? It's minus x squared on the left, x squared on the right, and then everything about the Fourier convergence theorem is still true. So at any interior point where the function is continuous, you're expecting convergence of the series, but at the point of discontinuity, you're not. And where are you expecting the Fourier series to converge at the point of discontinuity? Well you're expecting it to converge to just a half, right, times you're expecting it uh, to converge to a half times the left value minus the right value, sorry, I, I was a bit silent there because I was um, didn't realize the screen was cut off. So, so where should the Fourier series converge to at pi? Well, it should be a half times the value on the left side. So let's look at the picture. It'll be a lot more clear if we look at the picture. So pi is where my mouse is about, right? At um, pi is 3.14, so it's somewhere here. And the left value is just the x squared function evaluated at pi. But the right value is essentially the left-hand side of the odd extension. So the, the right hand side of the function is going to be minus x squared evaluated at minus pi. Okay, so to be easier, we write that down here. So the left side, the left limit is just pi times squared. Okay, and then you have to add the right limit and the right limit is going to be minus pi, it's a uh, right limit is minus x squared, so apologies, so it's minus the negative pi squared like this, and indeed you just have zero. Okay, so that's what the graph indicates. And someone in the chat has asked basically, oh, is it a property of an odd function that um, the, 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 the convergence towards the midpoint value is so nice for an odd function? It could, it could very well be. Maybe that's something that you want to think about. So it could be that it is just a property of odd functions that the convergence of each of the sums towards the, the exact midpoint value is so nice. So here you see that it looks like everything is converging towards zero. Okay, in fact, everything lies on zero. Um, 
that's basically all there is about these two functions. Okay, I want to come back to this question someone had asked about why use an even or an odd extension. Um, and I just want to think about whether I can actually answer that question for the two examples we have here. I can't quite answer the question for the two examples we have here, but I can give you an idea of why um, you would might want to do so. So let me set up the question a little bit more properly. The question is as follows. Suppose that I gave you an original theory. So I gave you the function x squared from 0 to pi. Okay, so this black line. So I'll zoom in here so you see. So I gave you the function x squared from 0 to pi. And I asked you, go and compute me the Fourier theories via an even or an odd extension. And we've just done it here for the odd extension. And you say, well, you haven't specified which one you want. Sh should I choose even or odd, right? It will turn out to be the case that the even extension is a better approximation, okay? And the way that you can see that is that, well, we'll do it on the board in a second. I uh, know, let's just do it on the board right now. Okay, so let's plot and turn off the display here. And so we're ready to just erase this. Okay, I'll erase this as well, and this up here. Okay, so the odd extension looks like this, yes? And you can plot it as well on the left here, just like that, and just like that. And remember that at the points of discontinuity, the odd extension will converge the Fourier series of the odd extension. The Fourier series will converge to the midpoint of the left and the right endpoint. And because it's an odd function, that midpoint ends up being exactly zero. But as I said before, you can just calculate yourselves. It's going to be one half the value of f, the odd extension, at pi on the left plus the value at pi on the right. Okay? And that will just turn out to be exactly zero because it's just one half. So this will be pi. The height here is pi. That's the left-handed limit. And the height here is, this is a minus pi squared. So this would just be minus pi squared. Okay, so that's just stating the obvious. Okay, so now, instead, if you wanted to plot the even extension, what would it look like? We, we, we showed you that yesterday, but let's do it again. So, remember I first give you the function from 0 to pi, like this, and I say, right, extend for me the function in an even way. So you just form the mirror picture about the y-axis. So this is now the even extension, and then you take this, and then you just copy and paste it again, like this. So this is now 2 pi, and this is 3 pi. Okay. So this is the even extension of the function. And the key here is that when you compute the Fourier series, this Fourier series turns out to be nicer. Why? Because basically this function is always continuous. So f is always continuous here. Okay? And only the derivative is discontinuous at these points here where it's no longer smooth. But it's the points of discontinuity that essentially give you the extra wiggles in your Fourier series, right? The Gibbs phenomenon, if you like. And those wiggles essentially slow down the convergence of the series. I'll show you that numerically in a second. Okay? How would you know any of this? Well, what I'm trying to explain to you is that if you were to plot a graph here of n versus bn, or n versus an, then you would hope that this graph would tend to zero. Right? Well, why does it need to tend to zero? Um, it needs to tend to zero because otherwise your function doesn't converge, right? So essentially you have to make sure you're adding in, as n goes to infinity, you're adding in 
extra oscillation. So remember that if n is like a million, then this, you're going to have a cosine or a sine of you know 10 to the 6 times x. So this is an extremely wiggly function. And you have to make sure that when you form the Fourier series and you convert and you compute the Fourier series as function, the number that appears in front here, the a i that appears in front, has to be really, really small. Because if it's not really, really small, you're adding in, in a large, in, uh, infinitely wiggly function. So you would expect that the graph of each of the comp of each of the components here needs to tend to zero, because otherwise the thing that you add up doesn't make any sense. It is not going to converge. Okay, and basically what I'm saying is that the convergence of these coefficients to zero ends up being faster for this case on the left than it is for the case on the right. So for the case on the left, you might have something that converges to zero like this. Whereas the case on the right, you might have something that converges to zero much more slowly. Okay, and and that's basically why you might prefer in this case the even extension of function because the even extension is a much nicer function for the Fourier series to converge to. Okay, and. I was saying that I, I can't show you numerically because we haven't formed the even extension of the function, but just as a test, I can show you the coefficients. So here, we've calculated each of the coefficients. They're just b of n as so, okay? And we can plot those coefficients as a function of n. So let's just try that here. So I'm going to make a new figure. I'm going to make an index n. Let's call that ni from 1 to say 100. And then I'm going to plot ni versus b of ni. Now, before I do that, I have to vectorize this thing to make sure it can take vector inputs. And that should work, hopefully. Let's try that again. Okay, so now let's try that again. Ah, here we are. Okay, so you see these are the coefficients. These are the b n coefficients. On the horizontal axis you have n. On the vertical axis you have b of n. Indeed, it looks like everything is tending to zero. If it wasn't tending to zero, it means that if n is extremely large, you're adding in an oscillation, a non-trivial oscillation, which is extremely oscillatory, right? Which doesn't make a huge amount of sense. Have I flipped it around? I don't think so. So I, I were you asking whether my graph have flipped around? So if I plot x label here and then y label here, this is b. Like so. Okay. Okay. So th this is my my attempt to try to explain to you why this 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 subtle nature of even and odd extensions. You don't really need to know this, but I think it's very interesting to know. Okay, let, let's go on. Let's try to, try to wrap things up. Um, in fact, we're, we're, we're over time. So I'm going to wrap things up by motivating some results that you need for the assignments, and then we'll just leave it at that. Okay, so let's close this. Okay, so... Um, what did we cover? We covered how to compute the Fourier series of the x squared function from 0 to 2L, the regular extension of the function from 0 to 2L. We also covered basically how you compute the odd extension. And you can do the same thing for the even extension. It's not hard to do it for the even extension. Okay? Um, so now, there, just, just to note for the assignment, if you follow the notes here, example 12.11, okay, um, 
it asks you to calculate the Fourier series of e to the x on 0 to 2 pi. So this is the 2 pi extension of the Fourier series is 0 to 2 x. And then ex example 12.12 .12 is to calculate the Fourier series of the even extension. of e to the x um, from 0 to pi, and then you extend that to minus pi to pi, right? So I'll draw a very quick picture of what just happened. Okay, so the e to the x function, so it starts at e to the 0, which is non-zero, and then it goes up very rapidly. So this is from 0 to, uh, let's write this as 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so the first part, this first example is just asking you to compute the Fourier series from 0 to 2 pi. This is exactly the same as we just had x squared. Okay, so it's very, very similar. The only issue here is that the integration by parts is more of a pain in the butt. But if you want to do this, make sure you look at the exam at the uh, typeset notes, and they give you a formula for how do you compute e to the x times cosine of nx and e to the x times sine of nx. So what your Fourier series will eventually convert to is this graph here. This is four pi and so on. That's this first example. The second example is the even extension of the function, so let's plot that. So in the even extension of the function, you only start off with, with half of it from 0 to pi instead of from 0 to 2 pi. You flip it about the axis like this, and then now you just copy and paste that over and over. Okay, so this is e to the x, okay, and then this is minus pi. And the way that you calculate this is exactly the same as what we've done. You just go and replace x squared with e to the x, right? But I want to warn you that the integration is more of a pain, and if you refer to the notes, they'll, they'll give you a formula for how you integrate functions like e to the x times cosine of nx dx. Even though you might have done this in first year or in A levels, when you do integration by parts of this thing, you have to do this trick of moving it to the left hand side and simplifying it. Um, so it's not it's not so straightforward to integrate that by parts. Okay, I want to wrap up now um, just by mentioning some of the resources and uh, some of the resources that um, you're going to have, and I think some things will change. We'll find out what's going to happen with the exams. I don't know yet. But I'll update you um, as soon as we know. Um, in terms of the resources, uh, this stream becomes essentially available as soon as it ends. Okay, so you can always go on the Twitch website and access the, the stream as it was recorded live. And then I basically downloaded it and then reposted it to Panopto. So this is yesterday's one. Um, I also cleaned it up slightly just by removing the initial chat and then removing the any any things at the end but the interior remains unedited um, and this takes about a day for the thing to finish processing i don't know whether it's still processing at the moment so if you want to view it not on the website with with the chatter before then just go to the panopto site and um, view it there but it just warning you that it does take time it take the university system kind of processes this and it takes about a day for this to happen. Okay. The second thing, oh, and there's a new banner. It's a red banner. Okay, so you just you can recognize the before, the before we disbanded, and then the after we disbanded versions. Okay, so um, the second thing that I want to mention is regarding the visualizer notes. Uh, Uh, 
The second thing I want to mention was, are the visualizer notes. For yesterday's lecture, I put up a note here. So if you click lecture 20 here under the visualizer scan, it's not a scan, but I've simply written in a very brief way everything that we covered yesterday. Okay, so from the Fourier convergence theorem to Fourier series on any interval, and basically the Fourier series for even and odd extensions. Okay, so this is exactly what we covered without the pictures, and hopefully this is this serves the purpose of the visualizer notes. Um, in the future, I might simply hot link the video here so you can actually access the video and just stop it and start it at certain points, and that allows you to to relate exactly what happens on the video with um, the content that's described in the notes. Okay, um, finally. I don't know, so someone has asked um, if the exams are scrapped, would you release the papers? Probably not, because it takes us a lot of time to write papers and it needs to be approved and etc. And this means we might not need to write it for next year. I don't know, so no one knows anything. This is probably one of the lesser priorities at the moment, um, but we'll see what happens, okay? Um, as we enter the weekend, I just wanted to say a few things. Obviously, go into your shopping like I tried to do yesterday. Um, I, just out of, this is more of personal curiosity sake, if you're interested in news, you're stuck at home, I really quite like listening to the NPR podcast. So this is sort of an American podcast. It's really well produced. They've got lots of different podcasts covering everything which is topical in nature. Um, and I found it quite nice and calming and relaxing to, to, to listen to um, this well-produced program. So I want to share for you ways that you can stay active. I also mentioned yesterday that I think the National Trusts are opening up. So if you find that you want to take a walk, then maybe go down to Prior Park and Bath, and you're still in Bath, of course, maybe go down to Prior Park and Bath um, and have a walk around the nice parks there. Um, So we're hoping that, so finally, this question of when you're expecting to hear, we don't know. All we know is that we're, we're, we should be finding out from the university management, from the, from the, the powers that be today. And um, I think it's a very good chance that you're going to find out that they'll send you an email as soon as they know, right? So they know everyone is super anxious about what's going on. Um, and I think hopefully you know as well that everyone here is working really hard to try and salvage the situation. Okay. Um, with that, let's disband for the weekend. You'll get a summary email of, uh, as usual, the, the, the week seven email as usual, um, and any particular issues, <laughs> any particular issues, uh, you can let me know, but otherwise have a good weekend.